UFC fans can be a very strange group. Most are funny, easygoing people, but others have a misplaced sense of protection over fighters. They think that because someone gets hit in the head for money in a cage, they automatically deserve respect. They think because someone can physically beat you up that you shouldn't make fun of them. If you're a nurse, a firefighter, a prize fighter, if you have an embarrassing personal life, I'm going to ridicule it. Sean O'Malley is an extraordinarily exciting fighter and is undeniably a rising star in the UFC. But he's also a bad influence on young MMA fans and not because he smokes weed or gets face tattoos. I'm talking about his open relationship. We're going to start with a clip from the Full Send podcast. A lot of you have probably seen this one or at least portions of it, uh, but it provides a lot of important information, uh, background information for the other clips we're going to watch. You guys have an open relationship or something? Yeah, I heard about that. I yeah, know. I mean, it's it's everyone's that. everyone has like a different take on what an open relationship is. I like to think of ours as like just an open minded relationship where we don't own each other. I don't own her and she doesn't own me. We've, we've, you know, you have to read when you go into something like that. It's like you look for other things, other people that have done similar things, books, podcasts. There's a lot of people that have done different relations, relationships than just a monogamous relationship. All right. So he just describes his open relationship quickly. This is on 1.25 speed. So hopefully, uh, goes by a bit quicker for you guys. Because, but when I met Danny, I told her, I'm like, I don't know why somebody would fuck the same chick for the rest of their life. Like, I can't do that. So me and Danny had, she knew. She didn't fall in love with a fake me. She knew who she was falling in love with. Because I was myself. I talked about chicks. I like was just genuinely myself and didn't uh, lie to her. I wasn't didn't say like I don't think about fucking chicks or I was just straight up with her since day one. And That's a pretty common thing, I think, w- for a twenty year old to say, especially when you have ambitions of like fame and stardom, like Sean O'Malley. So no real shame in saying that. Let's keep watching. Uh, she said that to you. Danny messaged me and said you should you should hit her up, and I hit her up and smashed that night. So like I wasn't gonna hit her up because I didn't think she I didn't get that vibes from her. When she took told the you to smash that. Danny other. messaged me and said you should hit her up. See, that's very interesting. So- a lot of you guys who have been in relationships, especially long term ones, would take that from your girl as that's a test, dude. That's a test. That's not your girl giving you permission to fuck a chick. You're with a bit of an unhinged woman. Let's keep watching. That was probably like, I was like, that's, that was sweet. And I did it. And then I got back to Phoenix and she asked me, said, how'd it go? And I was like, yeah, smash. Thanks. And like, she got a little, dabbed each other up. Oh yeah. (laughs) And she got a little emotional. (laughs) Yeah. Look at this. She got a little emotional because a lot of feelings come up. All right, dude. Because she didn't actually want you to fuck this hot chick. This hot groupie. A lot of feelings come up when, when you when you're going through a relationship like that, and but that's how we've grown so much together is by doing things like that, having those cr- uncomfortable conversations to where it's just hard to even talk to your partner about certain things because you don't know what emotions are going to come up. You don't want to hurt the, each other's feelings, but you also have to realize you're not in control of each other's feelings. Bro, he's literally talking about having unnecessary like marital problems and and acting as if you hear the cope in this entire story. Like, you don't need to have that to make your marriage stronger or your relationship stronger. Those are completely unnecessary issues. So do you tell do you tell your girl like if you ever like I don't know if you ever fell in love or like had feelings for another girl that you smashed? Do you tell her that we broke up at one point for for probably a couple months because I fucked up. I was in Vegas, smashed some biscuits, and and fucking th- you know, some, dude. Sometimes that's the thing with me. It's hard for me to put emotion out of it. I smashed biscuits, and I was like, I like her. And I fucked up, dude. Does that happened a lot to you? Biscuits, not good. anymore. I, since that, since that time, it has not happened anymore. So he's catching feelings for some of the girls he's banging, obviously. And that caused them to break up their open relationship. And you hear the Nelk boys question, so it's not that open. And he goes, no, 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 it's just feelings and emotions. Bruh, this sounds extremely healthy. I, I feel like I definitely learned from that and grew from that, but... uh. What's yeah. that phone call like? You got to pick up the phone. You'll say, hey, I just smashed a couple biscuits. It wasn't a phone call. It was like when I got off the plane <laughs> call. It was tough. It was very so tough. She moved that. out. She moved out and we went our separate ways for a couple months. And then. Uh, so it wasn't as open then? No, it was. But it's just like I said, those emotions it's hard, come it's up. Yeah, yeah, that's going to happen. It's not yeah. just going to be like, hey, it's been open. It's perfect. We're going to deal with the emotions and it's fucking a lot. It's probably it's harder than anything. Okay. So, yes, you're in an open relationship. And it's good to hear Sean actually be a little bit honest in this. You're going to be fucking insecure and jealous. Both 
parties are. So the insecurity and the jealousy that arises in yeah, you it's real, it's real. is crazy. How but she, on the other I side agree. of that is fucking a lot of happiness. I wonder, has she ever told you she smashed another guy and then you guys dab each other up? That's this is really important. Pay close attention to this section. She hasn't, she hasn't, she hasn't smashed any biscuits before, but she told me one time. She because I was having I was I was hooking up with this one chick and 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 Danny knew we had we'd hooked up with her together at one point. So Sean starts banging a chick they had a threesome with. His girlfriend gets jealous, resentful, potentially. She she was getting a little jealous. She was feeling those emotions and, and she was like, I want to have sex with, with someone. And you know him. Like, it was a, one of my buddies. Oh, you know shit. him. Oh, and so shit. I said, I said, who is it? And she told me. I swear to God, I messaged that kid. And I said, you know what kind of relationship we're in. I'm not going to be mad at you. Sean, instead of maybe reevaluating his relationship, going, do I love this woman? Or B, I don't love her. Maybe I should just break up with her. She seems to be getting jealous when I'm banging girls. And now she wants to bang one of my friends. But nope. Sean goes, oh, let me send this guy a DM. Let's listen. If it happened, if she mess, if she hits you up, you have my word. I don't know, like that's that was it was that your boy. You're, you like you your got friend. a good very like upfront. You always make but, things up. Yeah, your friend is like this. wow. But my but I, he 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 hit me back up. And he's like he's like okay like he knows what kind of relationship we're in. Like we're buddies. And he uh he said yeah I'll have to think about this. And like I'll, we met up at a, at a tea shop coffee shop talked it out. And he's like I I just don't think I could do that. You guys went to a coffee shop. Mm -hmm. You see, you can even see Salim's face, dude. Salim is legit incredulous at this situation right now. Pay attention to Kyle's face too. We talked about it. I and, might and, take a little bit too far. She never. Right. She never. Mm, mm, me. Hit him up. It never went anywhere. But at in my mind, I accepted and was okay with if she were to do that. That it's because it's something she wants to do. It has nothing to do with me. It's not because I'm ugly. It's not because I can't fuck her good. It's not any of those things. It's because it's something she. It's one of her desires that she wanted to Thank do. Thank God, right? Thank God, it's not that. Let's move on to the pregnancy clip. This one is insanely wild. I'm going to play pretty much the whole thing, all the important part. Before we get started, pay attention to how fiercely Danny is patting their baby. So you guys have been dating for like six years now. Yeah. And then was the baby, didn't expect the Accident. baby. Accident. We were making sweet love. <laughs> we, were, we had just gotten to, we had just gotten, um, we were having a little bit of issues trying to figure out some stuff. Um. She went to Sedona for a couple days. She wasn't letting me smash biscuits a couple weeks before that either because mm -hmm. we were um, going through some stuff. Okay. So they had another issue in their relationship, clearly a pattern, right, where they've been breaking up. He went to another town. They were out of contact with each other and then had unprotected makeup sex. And then she got back from Sedona. And we, I, we remember that mm -hmm. night. Or the day it was right before I came and hit mitts, mm -hmm. I was, and uh, we, make, we made sweet love. But I didn't bust in her. I don't understand. How to yeah, that's what you said. You didn't bust, so that had was, to have been damn. like. A, but it was like to where we were. Right okay, look at Tim's fucking face, and also just take that in. He didn't bust in her. I stopped, so I didn't bust because yeah. it was just so cool. It happened. <laughs> but yeah, and then it happened, and and then how many months later? Like, how did you find out you're pregnant? Did you start feeling so, different? The bottom line is, yes, you can get pregnant from pre-cum, but it's extraordinarily unlikely, nearly as unlikely as getting pregnant while using a condom. There is a 20% chance of pregnancy when regularly using the pull-out method compared to an 18% chance of pregnancy when regularly using only male condoms as your choice of contraception. It seems to be nearly a negligible difference obviously you use spermicidal lubricants iud's your chances of pregnancy decrease drastically at that point you know getting up to close to the 100 percent uh range furthermore it's hard to get pregnant yeah women can get pregnant when menstruating when they're outside of their ovulation window uh it's really unlikely once again if you're combining those odds with pull out method impregnation one in five chances of that impregnating you. Those have to, I don't know. I'm not a mathematician, but those odds have to jump to, you know, it's like a one in, it's got to be statistically extremely unlikely to be getting pregnant from the pull up method or using a condom while a woman is not ovulating and when the partner does not even ejaculate inside them, right? 
Well, I had the jiu-jitsu tournament, so my weight was different. So I thought, like, I was following a strict diet, and I was like, oh, my period's not coming. Maybe because my body's changing. Okay. Extremely important. Danny was essentially in a camp, a sports camp for a jiu-jitsu tournament. As she just stated herself, she was on a very strict diet, i.e. not ideal to get pregnant at all. And instead of noticing a month, two months after when she's missed a period or two periods not, and not missed a period from an excusable thing like cutting camp where it would affect your menstruation, she notices 12 days after that she's pregnant and happens to take a pregnancy test. That is the earliest possible window that a pregnancy test can work. And typically, you would only be taking a pregnancy test at that time if you were trying to get pregnant, like a married couple who are actually planning to conceive a baby and the woman is trying to test it. You know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. let's look at the dates. That was fit. Um, when was the jiu-jitsu tournament? February 15th. February 15th. And then which day did we make sure we love? The third. <laughs> February 3rd. Oof. So that was like... It must have been some good love. Oh, it was. That was almost two weeks before, and she, she got pregnant on the third, competed on the 15th. And then what day did you tell me? Oh, yeah, that she competed. Friday after. She like, okay. 12 days pregnant, not 10 days, but not much of a difference. 10 days, two weeks. Far too early to really notice changes in the body of a woman, uh, for a woman to notice those changes herself, as well as far, like, if you're in a jujitsu camp, why would you assume that you're pregnant from one sexual session. I don't know why I'm speaking like this. You guys know what I mean. I'm trying to make this scientific. Why would you think when your boyfriend didn't even bust in you 12 days before, when you're in the middle of a training camp, that you're pregnant because you you're missed your period by what? A couple days, I'm assuming, at this point? Or you had some... She doesn't even specify why she takes the pregnancy test. Just that her body is changing. It could have been from the jiu-jitsu tournament. What? 10 days pregnant technically when you when you competed so that baby's got some good genes because i was in camp i was supposed to fight Feb something and then whatever but sean mentions here he had a fight camp delayed he was supposed to fight in february so he was right at the end of his camp he mentions this i was hitting mitts and all this stuff he was sucked out most likely neither of them are at their peak his sperm are probably low low fucking low He's starving himself to make bantamweight. He's at the end of a fight camp. His camp got delayed, so now he has to extend his fight camp for a couple of weeks until he fights at the beginning of March. Also, he smokes weed. That kills your sperm count. I don't care what any of you guys are going to say in the comments. I smoke weed. It kills your sperm count. It lowers your testosterone. Long-term chronic use fucking kills your balls. So then you told me... Um, That's Friday. Because I fought March no, 7th. Saturday. That's when I fought Jose. So you just said, fuck it, I'm going to take a pregnancy test? Well, I had one in a drawer. I fought a long time ago and I had to dig through it. Uh -huh. <laughs> no, you did not. You did not have a pregnancy test in the bottom of a drawer that you happen to remember you had and dig for. Just because a public figure, like an actor, athlete, or fighter, has an embarrassing personal life does not mean it's off limits from analysis, comedic ridicule, satire, parody, or general conversation. Some of you MMA fans need to stop being so sensitive and realize if you're getting offended by the content of these videos and you relate to someone like Sugar Show O'Malley, you need to evaluate your own life. Dime, papi. Dime, mami.